Do you see the predator lurking in the rocks here? We are in the steppe region of Eastern Mongolia. And in slow motion, we are watching a three month old predator that is about to make what may be its first kill. This is one of three Pellis cat kittens that, along with their mother, we will observe playing, hunting, and resting within their rock formation den and the surrounding steppe grassland. This is the palace cat mother, and as we shall see, she takes excellent care of her three kittens. Here are two of those kittens. Like mom, they've just emerged from the den to greet the early morning sunshine. Pellis cat mating takes place December through March, and kittens are born in late March to early May. The three kittens seen in this documentary were estimated to be about three months old in late July of 2022. And here again is the Pellis cat mother. She is waiting for the rodent prey that make up the bulk of the Pellis cat diet to become active, and this usually begins a few hours after sunrise. The hour or two after sunrise is a good time for the rambunctious kittens to chase and play fight with one another. Such activities are critical toward developing the physical agility and mental skills they will need as adults to effectively interact with prey, predators, and indeed other palace cats. Notably, gestation in Pellis cats has been measured between 66 to 75 days in captivity. The litter size ranges from 1 to 6, but is usually 3 or 4. The kittens have a dark woolly coat, which lacks the frosted appearance seen in the adults. And here's mom again, ever alert for potential prey or predators that may be in the surrounding grassland. And she's also always very aware of her kittens, which are often hanging about her. She'll know what time is best to go out for starting the morning's hunting. It looks as though this kitten is especially bold and is surveying the surrounding grassland in anticipation of hunting all by itself.
and the kitten is learning how to negotiate and best utilize the great variety of observation posts provided by this rock formation den. It should be added that the labyrinth passageways provided by the rock formation have become familiar to this whole family of Pelis cats, such that they know how to very effectively retreat from external threats, such as those posed by wolves, foxes, and eagles. In another one to two months, these Pelis cat kittens will become independent. They will achieve adult size and weight at about eight months of age. Sexual maturity will be reached at about nine to ten months. This kitten is skirting the interface region where the safety of the den meets the surrounding grassland, which holds the promise of food along with the danger of predators. While the Pelis cat, a predator, is near the top of the food chain, it is not at the apex of that food chain. And as we've mentioned earlier, there are very real threats posed by wolves, foxes, and eagles, any one of which could happily take a palace cat as a meal. And finally, one of the kittens ventures out into the grassland, the hunting territory, while the two other ones remain behind and continue playing in the den. With all this play activity, they're no doubt building up an appetite. Note that while most cat species have vertical slit-like pupils, Pelis cats have rounded pupils. They share this trait in common with three other cat species, the Jaguarundi, the Cheetah, and the Puma or Mountain Lion, also known as the Cougar. And here are some of the prey items that Pelis cats commonly eat. Brantsvole is a rodent that, depending upon environmental conditions, is subject to huge population swings. In 2022, it was very abundant in the eastern Mongolian steppe and was, as best we could tell, forming the bulk of the diet of the palace cats residing there. Notably, palace cats are key players in helping to keep the numbers of Brantsvole, a potential agricultural pest, in check. Another vole species, although one that is generally less common in the eastern steppe region, is the Mongolian silver vole. Larger than Brant's vole, it represents as prey an obviously greater nutritional benefit to the Pelis cat. 
Another abundant rodent species that we observe the palace cats feeding on is the Mongolian gerbil. Like Brant's vole, the Mongolian gerbil can also reproduce in large numbers when environmental conditions permit. In 2022, in the eastern steppe, the Mongolian gerbil may have been second only to Brant's vole in providing critical nutrient to palace cats. And here we see a lone palace cat kitten boldly venturing out into the grasslands in search of prey. This kitten is very bold indeed. But it soon discovers that its two siblings have been even bolder and have beaten it to the hunting grounds. An upland buzzard has just flown right past this kitten. If the buzzard posed a threat to the survival of this palace cat kitten, the kitten seems wholly unaware of that. And the upland buzzard passes by again. And the kitten seemingly gives casual notice. Back at the den, it appears that mom is ready to start the morning's hunting. It seems that at least one of the kittens is going to accompany her. As we'll soon see, the kittens pay very close attention to mom while she's hunting. Here goes mom in search of prey. And she soon catches a Brant's vole, which is immediately surrendered to one of the kittens. But how will the other two kittens eat? Mom has caught another vole. Here it is, and there it goes. Another kitten fed. Mom stalks and makes another kill. Well, it's not killed yet. This kitten will take care of that. And we trust that each of the three kittens has already received at least one Brant's foal to feed on. It seems that the second kitten that showed up just a little too late to get the vole will have to go empty pawed for now. Inspired no doubt by mom's example, this kitten is trying to catch its own vole. This skill of course will be critical to its long-term survival. The kitten is startled by the appearance of an upland buzzard flying overhead. But whatever danger there may have been has seemingly passed. Mom has captured another Brant's vole. She takes it back to the den.
she's probably looking to give it to one of the kittens. And if they won't take it, she'll go into the safety of the den and eat it herself. Or maybe save it for later. As mom stares intently at the ground, one of the kittens runs up, no doubt expecting to receive a vole as a meal. But it seems mom was unsuccessful that time. Patience and concentration are key in hunting voles. and the reward for patience. Is obvious. And mom takes the prize back to the den for the kittens. Now we see the three kittens hunting by themselves. They will need to become very adept at this in order to survive long term. Oh, and one of them certainly is successful. It runs back to the den. Right past mom and no doubt very proud of what might be its first success as a predator. This kitten looks to be especially well fed this morning and in very high spirits. Instinctively, this kitten digs into the dirt with its forepaws, thereby marking its territory. And it has now spotted and is stalking something. Is it a prey item? No, it's one of its siblings time for play. And here's mom again on the prowl hunting and taking a little scratch on the ear as well. She spotted something. It's an Isabelline wheat ear a small passerine bird that is common in the Eastern Mongolian steppe. She chatters at it. Oh! Hmm, maybe better go back to hunting voles. This kitten is perhaps thinking that there must be some prey it can catch. Ah, it sees something. Checks behind. Now, run for that prey. 
Where mom and voles are concerned, it's practically a sure meal. Meanwhile, back at the den, mom partakes of a much-deserved siesta. But the kittens take the opportunity to continue playing. Now, while observing the playful antics of these kittens, it might be a good time to discuss some more of the biology of this species. The steppe habitat, and therefore the Pelis cat habitat, is characterized by an extreme climate with little rainfall, low humidity, and a wide range of temperatures. The primary habitat is the steppe grassland regions of Mongolia, China, and the Tibetan Plateau. Pelis cats have been observed in elevations up to 4,800 meters, or over 15,000 feet, in cold, arid habitats of the dry grassland steppes interspersed with stone outcrops. Pelis cats have also been observed in desert, stony areas, such as that of certain regions of the Gobi. These small 8 to 10 pound predators prefer valleys and rocky areas where they have some cover and avoid completely open habitats. Pelis cats avoid areas of snow cover that exceeds 10 centimeters or 4 inches and the continuous snow cover of 15 to 20 centimeters or about 6 to 8 inches marks the ecological limit for this species. Pelis cats look much heavier than they really are due to their stocky build and thick coat. They are well adapted to their habitat. The thick fur insulates them against the cold, and the well-furred tail can be wrapped around the body like a warm muff. The flat head and low-set ears of Pelis cats are thought to be adaptations for stalking prey in open areas with relatively little cover. They hide for much of the day in caves or hollows under stones, or may adopt the burrows of other creatures such as marmots or foxes. Pelis cat body weight varies widely by season. Females are at their lowest in winter and when raising kittens. Males are lowest during the breeding season. Their mating call is said to resemble a cross between the bark of a small dog and the hoot of an owl. Threats to Pelis cats include the following. Habitat fragmentation and degradation due to overgrazing by domestic livestock and conversion to arable land. Predation by herding or domestic dogs. Mining and infrastructure developments. Prey depletion due to government-sanctioned poisoning campaigns for pikas and rodent species in some areas. Over-exploitation of pikas for food and their fur in other areas. Pelis cats are also hunted for their fur in large numbers. They are in demand as exotic pets and used in traditional medicine in Mongolia and Russia. Finally, Pelis cat survival is also threatened by depletion of marmots, which are commonly hunted. Marmot burrows are used by the cats to provide shelter, avoid predation, and give birth to and raise young. As Pelis cats are seen by many to be an especially cute species, they, not surprisingly, are somewhat popular in the illegal pet trade. But the common wisdom is that Pelis cats make terrible pets. First of all, living at very high altitudes as they do, they do not have especially robust immune systems. And they are therefore especially vulnerable to viral and bacterial diseases. In addition, Pelis cats, unlike domestic cats, can be especially prone to being, how shall we say, very hissy, very standoffish. 
and not the kind of animal that we might want to cuddle with. And even though an adult palace cat weighs only 8 to 10 pounds, nature has equipped it with teeth and claws that can be used very effectively. This species is perhaps best appreciated while being on a wildlife ecotour or safari. And for those of you who might be interested in seeing this species in the wild, I would highly recommend the information provided in the introduction to this video. And here's that name again, Otgan Bayar Batargo. As a very experienced Pelis Cat researcher, Otgun Bayer is excellent at arranging a successful Pelis Cat safari for his guests. Both my wife, Paulette, and I highly recommend his services. Here a Pelis Cat Kitten chatters at a bird. This kitten appears to have taken a keen interest in these birds. However, one of its siblings appears to have taken an equally strong ornithological interest. Of course, a kitten can always practice stalking skills on mom if no birds are about. And here again, this time seen in real time, is the opening sequence of this video where the Pelis cat kitten captures the Isabelline wheat ear. It's very fast. And again, let's see that in slow motion. as is perhaps characteristic of young felines of any of the 41 total cat species, this Pelis cat kitten takes apparent delight in playing with its kill. Indeed, it seems a lot more interested in playing with it than it does in actually eating it.
Perhaps we cannot help but look on with some sadness as the mate shows up to see what has happened to its partner. The surviving mate does not appear to be especially afraid of the palace cat. And it's possible that these birds lived around the palace cat kittens and were never previously attacked. It is perhaps only now that the palace cat kittens have developed the necessary skills required to capture birds as prey items. And a hoopoo has just flown in. It has some food in its beak to give to its chicks, which are located within the den, presumably in a safe area, and therefore one that is inaccessible to the palace cats. It seems that the Pellis cats haven't yet figured out how to catch this somewhat larger bird yet. But maybe they will. The hoopoo better remain vigilant. That hoopoo exit is probably a wise survival plan from here on out. And should anyone be interested, perhaps a few words now are in order with regard to how we obtained our Palace Cat video results. Palace Cats, remember, are very small animals, 8 to 10 pounds. And they are also extremely skittish. It's very difficult to get close to them without spooking them. We found that with what I'll refer to as a snow leopard caliber, spotting scope, it's possible to get decent video of palace cats from a say about 300 feet away. And by snow leopard caliber, I mean at minimum 95 millimeter objective lens and a 30 to 70 times power eyepiece. The fact that the palace cats at the Eastern Mongolian steppe camp that we stayed at were rather habituated to human beings that really helped our ability to get relatively close to them. And by relatively close, I mean no closer than 250 feet. Um, I've had the experience where I've been in other parts of Mongolia where you get within 1,500 feet of a pellis cat and it's gone. They just run away. They are very, very aware and they really blend in with their environment. You really want, especially when you go the first few times, somebody who is familiar with spotting them in the wild because you can be there a year as some researchers have and never actually see the palace cats even though they're just five six hundred feet away from you they really blend in with the environment if you would like to contribute to supporting the conservation of palace cats and other steppe wildlife consider giving to the Steppe Wildlife Conservation and Research Center. Another very good organization for small cat conservation is the Small Wild Cat Conservation Foundation. Your kind contribution to either of these two organizations could help a great deal.